Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. I think I've established now no need to tease the guest. It's a podcast. You know who it is. Okay. Don't forget, you can hear the full-length, longer version wherever you get your podcasts. So Andy Hamilton, because it's him, uh, I've known for uh, longer than I realized when, when I looked into it and thought about it. And you're, you're a sort of everything kind of man, aren't you? You sort of do everything or a lot of things, certainly. Yeah, I started out, yeah, that sort of just happened gradually. I started out as a writer. Yeah. Um, and then gradually, because I used to get a bit frustrated when I used to hand the stuff over and writers were not welcome. So, uh, yeah, gradually I got uh, frustrated. And then there was the, the, the moment when I snapped was I had, <laughs> I had a sitcom, um, the first episode of a new sitcom. And the director said to me, um, the way I like to work is the writer comes, you know, read through. It doesn't need tweaks. And then he goes away for a couple of days and then he comes back a few days later for what's called the writer's run. And any thoughts you have there, so I thought, well, you know, I should show a bit of humility and that's fair enough. That's the way he works. So I went away and I came back for the writer's run and the lead, the first scene, made his entrance on roller skates. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I watched this and, of course, it was ruining pretty much every line of dialogue because you, you hadn't written roller skates no right so then the director said okay Andy as the writer have you got any comments and I said and I try. I was really trying to be diplomatic and I said um, uh, I, I really don't think the roller skate thing works mm. and he looked at me and he said uh, well they've learnt it like that now oh, oh and that was and that was the moment where a little oh, voice oh, in my oh. head said you need to become a producer you yeah. know, you need to, yeah. you ne unless, because you, you'll end up going on a killing spree one yeah. day, you know, sort of, unless you can, unless your voice, you know, The is, writer is Andy enough. Hamilton has been <laughs> tasered <laughs> yeah. in Lewisham Shopping Centre. Oh, yeah. it could have been Fort, so different. Yeah. We were talking, and I, I want you to tell it again, because it was wonderful. You went to school. Yeah. At, and it's an important distinction here, not Westminster School, which is a, a private... Yes. Well, to do what is that a school that's provided prime ministers? Prime ministers, in? yeah. Right, you then, didn't go to that one. No. Which one did you go to? I went to Westminster City, which was a direct grant grammar school. Yeah. With a mixed intake, uh, some very very bright kids. Yeah. Some not so bright kids, and um, yeah, it was it was great. Were you writing when you were at school? When did that start for you? No, I was. Well, I mean, you know, I always. Were you performing when you were at school? I've got a memory of being in a play about some school kids getting snowed in at their school. And I was playing the fat kid who was off the pace. You know, the kind of part where you say the line, a bit like Doberman in Bilko, you oh, know, right, yeah. you know, slightly. And I do remember hearing laughter uh, and thinking, oh, that's... That's a nice sound. Nice sound, isn't yeah. it? Nice sound. But I didn't really do any performing. Then I went to Cambridge and I joined something called the Cambridge University Light Entertainment Society. Not the Footlights? No. I've, I, I've not come across the Cambridge oh, the, University Light Entertainment Society. Right. It's a charity. I think it's still going. And it predominantly it did shows for old people's homes, hospitals, yeah. uh, prisons, stuff like that. Any pe people who couldn't get away, mm -hmm. but to finance it, they did commercial reviews sort of once or twice a year to proper paying audiences. And um, gradually I started writing and appearing in, in, in those. But the part of the goad for writing was the material that existed, the archive material, I mean, was more than dated. It yeah. was sort of... And it involved an element of sort of humiliation at times. There was a, so people were desperate, you know, for some new material. And there was a sketch, a Tarzan sketch, where you used to have to jump on stage in your underpants and say, yeah. me, Tarzan, which was fine up to a point. But then some 
Bright Spark decided we'd do a tour of Scottish prisons and borstals. Oh, God. And I was cast as first Tarzan. So in front of about 400 uh, Glaswegian inmates, yeah. uh, I think it was called Paulmont Borstal, I jumped on stage in my underpants and went, me, Tarzan. And um, when I came off at the end of the sketch, my mate was absolutely in tux, curled up in the corner of the wings, tears <laughs> going down his face. And he, I said, what? He said, I timed it. I timed it. He said, there was four and a half minutes between your first and second line because the wall, when I jumped on stage in, you know, just me under it, I, there was just this wall of Glaswegian uh Derision and yeah, I don't, I couldn't tell you what any of it meant. I've got a rough idea. Four and a half minutes. Yeah, that's how loud it and was. You're just before there it, waiting yeah. in your underpants. Yeah. for it to subside. Yeah. So I started writing. Then I started writing sketches, and um, I so was that weekending was one of the first things that. Yeah, that was the know. first radio show yeah. I did. But it's interesting weekending because I think within the business it's very well known. But I think outside the business, beyond that that Radio 4 audience of, yeah. of that time. So how how did you get onto that? Was my memory of I'm a little I'm a little bit younger than you, but my memory of it is it's very hard to get into those things. You know, yeah. once you're in and you said, okay, you can start to move around. But getting that first, getting through the wall yeah. for the first time is yeah, a yeah. challenge. Yeah. I finished my last term at Cambridge. I didn't have a plan. What were you reading in Cambridge? I was doing English. Yeah. I was probably destined to become one of those bitter teachers uh, who, who, you know, who doesn't really want to be there and takes yeah. it. I don't, I, I don't know what I was going to do. We went up to Edinburgh, went up after my last year and we were performing in an old Bovril factory. So you'd watch the audience come in and they would walk to the end of the ticket and you'd see them to a, to a man or woman go, <laughs> just that there was just a, a waft of you know it had kind of suffused everything so anyway so we're doing the show one night and it, it, it went quite well and then this lovely very young man called Jeffrey Perkins oh, right. came oh, comes back yeah. and says who wrote that and I said well I did and he said oh you should do it for a living and he was just starting as a trainee producer was he so he said come along i'm starting on weekend and come and and the difference that makes having oh, someone yeah. who yeah, you've yeah. never met before yeah. Yeah. just expressing that confidence yeah so it was jeffrey then that yeah. opened the door for you yeah and so jeffrey said come along because they did have an, a, a kind of open meeting for writers yes so i went along to that and then you got paid for what you got on but number, but then they gave me a two minute commission. So then I was on, so I was going to get a minimum of four pound a week, come what may. What would that be in today's money? I don't know. I don't know. Three hundred thousand. What yeah, would it be? Yeah, yeah, that would be a nice wedge. <laughs> and then because it uh, sounds very little, it does. But I was really, again, I was lucky. To, the two established writers had just got big TV jobs, so a mm. couple of us were suddenly promoted. So suddenly I was having to write 10 minutes worth and you wrote nearly all of it um, on the Thursday, yeah. the day before. Because this so, is a topical, for yeah. people, Weekending was a topical show, a look back at the week's news. Yeah, and the sketches were, they had to be funny, but they had to have an argument. Yeah. So, yeah. so it was almost like a cross between being comedy writing and journalism, mm. you know, you had to mm. have a... You couldn't just go out and do sort of funny voices or just straight gags. So it was a great nursery, great training ground. So you're on there. Yeah. That's going well. You're getting stuff on. You're getting commission. What what happens then? I mean, we wrote, not the nine o'clock news was really important because. Oh, what did you, which of those sketches did you write? Do you remember? Uh, I did the stump pope. Mm. The devil is he all bad? Um, the devil is he all bad? I remember that. Yeah, I, was that who was that who 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 did that? Was that, that was, Mel? Or, that was a yeah. film sketch. You know, pre. Uh, look, I think Mel was the <sighs> main. Yeah, it's all a bit of a blur. But is what it, I yeah. do remember is it was, it was the first show in telly where because John Lloyd um, and Sean Hardy were were helming it and they were producing it and they they hadn't done it before. 
yeah, John had been brilliant at radio. But, yeah, yeah. So if you walked in with a mental idea, yeah, they would say, yeah, okay then. Right. I, I remember writing a sketch that involved dolphins. Yes. And I walked in with this, and I just said, uh, "Do need we need a lot of dolphins?" And yeah, the reaction was, oh, "Okay, yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's funny. We'll look into that." And whereas on any other show hitherto, it would have been really, you know, straight like, away the practicalities. Yeah, and John before. John described that show as uh, the blind leading the sighted, you know, because all <laughs> the we we were quite naive and yeah. innocent, but that helps you sometimes. Yeah. It helps you be inventive so there was that and then I did at a period where I did a fair amount of sitcom writing I wrote a lot of episodes of Shelley oh, at, um, Howell Bennett Tim's. yeah yeah that was which was great fun and I learned a lot mm -hmm. and then yeah and then by that time I'd paired up with Guy Jenkin right who was already a very good friend and we worked on lots of shows together and we'd worked a lot on Who Dares Wins which I co-produced and, oh, um, of course. You, you, yeah, four. I was forgetting that. Who Dares Wins came before yeah. Drop the Donkey. Yeah. But was it Drop the Dead Donkey when you first had what you might call status? He, he, probably. In terms of people outside the industry yeah. thinking, oh, that name rings That's about. right. And you're yeah, somebody yeah. now. Yeah. You're Andy Hamilton, yeah. Guy Jenkins is doing that. Yeah. And that was a, a, a big show. And it, it is, although it's from a long time ago, yeah. exciting news in yes. the modern day. Breaking news. Yes, we, we're we reviving it. We're getting the exact same cars. Are you? It's the same seven who, you know, did the last uh, four series. Um, and what are you doing with it? We are taking those characters who are all sort of heroic failures in the great sitcom tradition and we are going to um, plunge them back into the world of news. But, of course, the world of news now is oh, deep wow. fake, AI, 24-hour yes. uh, rolling news. And um, so, yeah, it's going to be – so we, it's touring from January. So it's a stage show. Right. Stage show. It's a yeah. play, really. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, sorry, stage show suggests there'll be dance and yeah, things yeah, and yeah, animal yeah. acts. <laughs> no, but it's a play. I think that it'll be a, a fantastic experience. Wow! So, and when did you then uh, transition into the, the the guy that's on the news quiz and QI and you know and and the thought of as a wit who appears in public and there right. is an Andy Hamilton persona? Person. I'd had a tiny dabble. I'd done a couple, but I'm really in, in like the eighties. I mean, I, I used to do news quiz yeah. on Radio Four, and I, I did that. Um, okay, and uh, that was the first one, was it? Where you're well, appearing I that, as yourself? Yeah, in the eighties, and the first time I did it, I stood in for Richard Ingrams because it was a set team in those days. It was Richard Ingrams, Ian Hislop on one side, and Alan Corrin and A and other on the other, and it was much more of a quiz. It mm. was, you know, you got correct answers and yeah. stuff. And Barry took in the chair and I, Richard was ill and they rang me up and said, would you stand in? And I did it. They, they, you know, I got regularly booked after that. And so I was a kind of, on radio, I was a yeah. panel show regular. But on telly, um, the main driver, the main drivers were twofold. There was going to be a, an election day, Have I Got News For You, which was going to be done because they have that problem of the results come out yeah, Thursday night. Yeah. They do it Friday lunchtime. And I got asked to do that. And I'd had a long period of, um, um, I'd had a person who was in the habit of pretending to be me. It wasn't just, he what didn't. What do you mean by that? By impersonating, passing himself off. Well, yes, but in what, in what context? In social contexts, and uh, so he would be. Well, hang on, this is rather unusual. Yeah. He would pretend to be you. Yes. To, to what end? Most, well, this is going to sound really, really, it started with my agent was in his office one day, and this was when, you know, I was still just a radio sort of person. Mm -hmm. And actually, I wasn't even, I was more a name on the end of programs. Right. And this young woman walked in and said, do you represent Andy Hamilton? And my agent said, yes. And she, says, she said, what does he look like? And Mark Berlin, my agent, described me and she went, ah. And it transpired that she had been living with a man for about three, four months who was telling her he was Andy Hamilton, um, 
the radio and TV writer. Wow. And he'd even shown her material that he'd written and she showed it to my agent, Mark Berlin. And Mark said to me, uh, he said, I read it. He said, it was actually quite good. <laughs> and I just said, do you think, do you think that's what I want to hear right now, Mark? <laughs> so all the women he duped would say there was roughly the same shape. He would, first date, he would turn up, pick him up in a Rolls Royce with a driver, take him out for a lovely meal. He would pay for it. Say, and then four dates down the line, he would go, oh, do you know what? I'd come out without my gold Amex card. Yeah. And they'd say, oh, well, I'll get this one. And, and is then, he also saying, because I'm writing all those sketches on the radio Yeah, as well. that's me. Yeah. I mean, he didn't just impersonate me i i mean who else you know, did he do well he i think his approach was when he got chatting if she said oh i'm a nurse He'd he would say, say oh, I'm, I'm a brain surgeon it was a little bit disturbing mm. because we didn't know whether he was a fantasist or yeah. whether he was a con man or what he was doing eventually each of these women would work out that there was they, they were down you mm. know they think hang on i'm two thousand quid down now um but um, anyway, it all climax. It all climax with him. He actually mounted a, a pretend movie in the offices above Hattrick. No, in the office. No. Yeah, yeah. There were six people up there working. hadn't been paid for weeks and weeks. But of course, in the film industry, yeah. that's not that astonishing. So he's in the offices above Hattrick, and yeah. he's saying he's Andy Hamilton. Well, he he was passing himself off. He was yeah, he was using that connection. So anyway, my wife Libby said to me, you've got to get on telly because that will inhibit him. You know, that will... So that, that will, was the motor for getting well, on that, telly? Well, that Good was Lord. part of it. Yeah, it, was, wow. it was useful. Let's wow. put it that way. Wow. It was, she said, you know, because I was thinking, well, he doesn't sound like me. Yeah. You know, it, how are people... But This is pre-internet, of course, pre-access yeah. to information. So yeah. I suppose... If you do come up with such a ludicrous idea, yeah. it's, you can say, well, I don't know what this guy looks like. I've heard his name on the credits. And he was one of those people, he was very bright and he yeah. was a very skilled fibber. What happened to him in the end? Well, I don't know is the honest truth. We were trying to, my friend who's a lawyer was trying to uh, sort of track him down to, it's very difficult. Passing off is really difficult. You know, I can, someone can say, you know, they can use your name. But as long as they don't defraud anybody or use it for any nefarious, yeah. that w at least that used to be the law. I think it's still the same. Then, then it wasn't actually a criminal matter. And he was very canny. He oh. made sure the sum stayed below the um, the somewhere by um, you know the sort of minimum claim. So mm -hmm. uh, he was really bright, and he was very talented. Uh, he sounds talking wonderful, his way, Andy. He sounds wonderful. He's talking his way out. And you kind of think, what could he have been? You know, if he, uh, if only he'd used his powers for good. Well, yes. Well, it, it, it's true, though, yeah, isn't it? Rather than all yeah. that creative energy yeah. going into spinning bullshit. But anyway, so that was quite a big factor. So I did that show and I really enjoyed doing it. Yeah. And, and it kind of killed a couple of birds with one stone. And then, and then I. Started doing more, yeah. Yeah, so lots of Have I Got News. And, yeah, and, then I, yeah. and I really enjoyed them in yeah, a way yeah, that yeah. when I'd had the first dabble with panel shows, I, I, I hadn't. Yeah. So I don't know whether I changed or they There's a lovely immediacy to them, isn't there? Yeah. There's not a lot of hanging around in, bush, do it, go yeah. home, which is very appealing. And it, well, with the topical ones, I turn up, you know, I've got maybe four good jokes in my head yeah. about the big stories that yeah. I know are bound to happen. Mm. They're bound to get a mention. And the moment may or may not arise where I get to say them, yeah. But it doesn't yeah. really matter. They're just like a yeah. comfort blanket, yeah. you know. And um, but the rest of it, when it works, it's just like, and it's true on what I lie to you and QI. It's just like being up the pub with your mates, yes, yes. or some very yes, bright yes. mates. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And even brighter <laughs> once the edits happened and everyone yeah. looks like with quick. a really bright guy sit that sat in the middle hosting it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly yeah. like yeah. that's what all our evenings at the pub were like when I was young. Yeah. Um, we we're talking in May of 2023 uh, in the United Kingdom, where the spring has been disappointing, yeah. and we are all longing for June. And July, not just for the weather, but because for theatre goers, 
It's going to be a rather special time as an evening with Andy Hamilton winds its way around the country. <laughs> who better than Andy Hamilton? Well, well that, maybe, maybe that bloke, but who better than Andy <laughs> Hamilton to tell us about an evening with Andy yeah, Hamilton? That was the most effortless segue I've ever. That was pure class. I'm not the best, but I'm quite good. No, you're... <laughs> Yes, so I'm, yes, I'm going on to a very, a very leisurely, gentlemanly. It tour. is because I looked at the dates yeah, and I no, thought that is that, that yeah. this is a man. He's not going to break a sweat. <laughs> What's in the show? Well, the second half is I put a you know at the interval I put a bucket out of the front yes. of the stage and they fill it with questions. They have to fill it from where they're sitting. Very good. And if they are, we've got nothing to worry about. Yeah. If they can. So that takes care of the second half. So yeah. that goes where. And what sort of questions do you, do you get? It varies along, yeah, it's a pretty wide spectrum from sort of big picture yeah. questions about politics yeah. to, you know, who's the nicest person you've ever worked yeah, with, yeah, da, yeah, da, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. and surreal, the odd surreal. Um, and you can talk about, you, you're totally co comfortable just to get them, let's see. Well, it's okay, the upside of being older yeah. is you've got quite a deep reservoir mm. of, Anecdotes, stories, yeah. Yeah. material, opinions. Yes. Um, yeah, so... That's no, the second half. Now, what are these people doing in the auditorium during the first half? During the first half? Because you've glossed over that. Okay, I do... Uh, currently, what I'm doing is I, I do a little, a little bit of preamble to get them in a good mood. You're about to see a little bit of dancing or something. Then. <laughs> no, I should do that. And then I... The show at the moment, I tell five jokes that I regard as sort of classic jokes, right. joke jokes. And then I go back and it sort of look at how they're all really serious, about oh. really serious things yeah. um, and how, you know, and so I slightly deconstruct them about, you know, um, you know, what, what jokes are for. I love all that. If you take a classic yeah. joke. Would a classic joke? Let's. We both were very friendly with Barry Cryer. Would, yes. Would a, would a classic joke? And I've been telling this in my recent show, and I talk about Barry a bit. He told the joke, which he said was told to him in a pub. You'll have heard this. Man is at his wife's funeral, and the vicar comes down to the front, and says, "I'm sorry for your loss. Do you have any questions?" The man says, "Yes. What is the Wi-Fi code?" And the vicar says, "We're burying your wife." And the man says, "All lowercase." <laughs> No, you could you could, you could take heard, that apart. I had not heard not, that Isn't one. that a glorious joke? That's a fantastic joke. Isn't that a glorious, joke. glorious joke? Was that one of the later phone calls? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is fantastic. Yeah. 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 Um, now, that's the kind of joke I imagine you could examine in the same way because there's a lot to say about that. Where it's yeah. Of death, of course, is, this, yeah. is the big thing there. The, is it, da, da, da. But it's, it's just beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. And it's not, you know... And it's because the response is the opposite of what That's the response right. should be. Yeah. Um, and you go big and small and all these yeah. things. It's yeah. uh, And it's so economical and, and it's, so precise. And it's naturalistic. Mm. And mm. yeah, mm. no, I know. If you've enjoyed Andy and I talking about that joke, I think you'll love An Evening with Andy Hamilton touring the country to leisurely pace in <laughs> June and July. Is there such a thing as andyhamilton.net.com where people can go to find out about There's this? There's probably on, on there'll be, I think if you go on YouTube oh, and just, go just, Andy Hamilton just, yeah. tour. The days where you have to tell people how yeah. to find it are gone, Rob. Get with it. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. put him in and yeah. you'll see it. I'll post some flyers to them. <laughs> That'll be good. <laughs> no, I, so I should, I should go, right, well, listen, do you have any flyers? <laughs> Do you know it's a funny thing? <laughs> Andy really enjoyed it. Thanks so Thank much. You, Thanks Rob. for coming in. Andy Hamilton. Pleasure.